<laughs> you know, we thank you. We have come to the end of the series. And a lot of y'all don't even realize this has been a series because we began with love is the reason. This has been my, my version of a Christmas series that I don't go directly to the whole of the Christmas story, but I use the Christmas story as an outlier so that we can see God in a different way in this season. And love was the reason that we started with and love is still the reason. And grace is the objective that he came for. And this week, hope is the gift. Hope is the gift. This is the gift of hope. This is the gift of hope because Jesus is hope. And I, I, I struggle at one point in mind because the scripture says that on earth, peace and goodwill toward men, but the Lord showed me that hope gives peace and opportunity. There will be no peace if you don't have hope for peace. Peace can't take root unless hope is alive. Peace just continues to swirl and swirl and swirl until it has a place to land. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is not just my hope for today. My hope for all eternity is Jesus. Paul describes Jesus as our hope in 1 Timothy 1 and 1. And in Titus 2 and 13, he calls him our blessed hope. And the reason he does this is to point out that there is no man or woman that can't be forgiven. Sometimes when we standing in our judgmental stage and when we are being critical of others, we have to remember that Somebody had hope that one day we'd get it together. They, they, they didn't see us together, but they had hope that we would one day get together. It doesn't matter how long you've walked with God. You have to go back and remember that somebody not just prayed for you, but they, they had formed something in their mind called hope. That God was going to do something amazing in your life. Amen. Paul is pointing us to the place that, that with hope. We can look at somebody and say that they can be redeemed. They can be delivered. They can come out of that. They will overcome. Amen? Yes, amen. There is no life that cannot be transformed. But we have to hold on to hope. Hope goes beyond every situation that you're standing in. Hope goes beyond every circumstance that you're dealing with. And we have to understand that because we live in a time, glory to God, where things look hopeless so many times. Amen. Sometimes I, I, get, I, I get upset because I, I look at the fact that this, this, this virus could have been contained by now, but each mutation seems to spread and spread more and more. And it almost seems hopeless if I was hoping on medicine. Oh my, God. my hope is not in... Dr. Falke, and I'm, my hope is not in Pfizer, and my hope is not in Moderna, and my hope is not in a government, and my hope is not in science. My hope is in Jesus, the one who came to bring hope to all mankind. Amen? And no matter what your situation was on yesterday, there are no magic in days. There are no magical days, and we allow ourselves to get caught up in the magic that we create in our mind, but that's not hope, amen? amen. And sometimes we have turned hope into a wish list, and, and we do God and ourselves a great dishonor when we start to look at things, but the Bible teaches that, that hope is, that is seen is not hope. So anything that you're pointing to and hoping for, that cannot be the hope of God in your life. I hope that breaks down some of the materialism that people have attached to hope. That what you see cannot be hope according to the word of God. So how can somebody hope for what they see? I go out there and look at your car and I hope for it. That's not hope. That's coveted wishing this. I'm wishing to covet. <laughs> I'm messing up two times. See, this is what God is trying to get us to see with the coming of Jesus, amen? 
Because this one scripture in Matthew 12 and 21 in the NIV, it says, this is how powerful hope is. Nation, nations will put their hope in the name of Jesus. Nations will put their hope in the name of Jesus. You want to point to what's going on and, and what's wrong in America right now? America quit putting their hope in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, my God, my God. That same scripture in a, in a new uh, American Standard translation says that in his name, Gentiles will hope. In his name, Gentiles, those who are separate from God. In his name. In his name. He came and set something in place just by coming. Just by being here. He put some things in place that had been promised, that had been, that had the promises that had been going on for thousands of years. Just his coming set everything in place. Because in the Old Testament, even Moses told them that I'm going to raise up somebody that is not going to be, he's going to come from us, but he is going to come from somebody else. He's going to come for the Gentiles. Isaiah warned that he is coming for the Gentiles. In the Old Testament, the prophets warned that there's one that's coming for the Gentiles. When he came, the Gentiles had hope. What do you mean by Gentiles, Pastor? I'm talking about us, those who were not born Jewish. The Spirit said to me something that was so profound that I almost didn't write it down because I thought that it was just for me. But he said, no, I'll write this down because I want my people to see this and they're mature enough to understand it. The Spirit of God said to me, and write this down, he says that the hope of Jesus is the catalyst of our sustained joy and the descriptive imagery of faith that proves our trust and reliance on God alone. I'm going to repeat that because I see a couple of pins moving. It says that our hope of Jesus is the catalyst of our sustained joy. And this is the part that blew me when I was sitting there hearing this. It is also the descriptive imagery, descriptive imagery, descriptive images in your mind, the descriptive images in your mind of what faith has proven that our trust and reliance is in God alone. See, what we have to understand that hope is a flesh fight. Hope doesn't come easy because it's a flesh fight. That's why we like to wish instead of hoping. Wishing is escapism. Wishing allows us to get away for a moment. Wishing is to fantasize. Hope is a fight. Hope is something that I have to dig in on and know that whatever God says to me, it will take place. The image that he has shown me has not gone anywhere. I'm going through a storm. I'm going through a battle. I'm going through a sickness. I'm going through some things in my life. But if God has given me an image, I don't need you to prove it. I don't need you to touch it. I don't need you to agree with me on it. I don't need you to do anything. I am in a fight. I just pray that you pray that I can remain in the fight because if I remain in the fight I get closer and closer to that thing that I hope for amen, amen. this is a flesh fight Thank you, God. and the closer that Christians get to the understanding that there is no easy there is no easy the closer we'll get to seeing the hope of God revealed in our lives I said the closer we'll get to seeing the hope of God revealed in our lives. I didn't sell your hope. I said the hope that God has for you. See, the hope that you have has to line up with what God has already hoped for you. He has had an, uh, he already has an imagery. He has already has an imagery in heaven of what he has already, already has acknowledged that will take place in your life. My God, my God, I, Ah, ha, 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 ha. This is why it's a flesh fight because you want to hear something that makes you happy and makes it sound easy, but it's not easy. It is a flesh fight. But let me tell you something. Jesus came. So listen, what is that song that brother just played? I plead the blood. I plead the blood. This is war. 
This is war. You let the devil come and steal your hope because things get bad. You let the devil come and steal your joy because somebody said something to hurt your feelings. You let the, the devil take your Christmas celebration away because you didn't have enough money to buy what you wanted. You didn't have, come on somebody, you didn't celebrate. You, you got sad at Christmas because you said that you wanted this and you didn't get it and they don't love you and they didn't show their love for you. You didn't get it because you the kids didn't come over and stay with you and nobody called you on Christmas day and now hope is gone. Let let me tell you something right now. This is why it's a flesh fight. If nobody called you, yeah. if you didn't get nothing, glory yeah. to God, in Christ Jesus, there is an image of something that has been promised in heaven that is going to take place in your life. And you yeah. cannot let it be dictated by the people around you, even though they love you and you love them. It has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with you and God, you and God, your relationship with God and the faith and reliance on God alone. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. See, because this flesh fight has to take place because the spirit in us has to convince the soul. The soul has to go on now and describe that image of faith so that the flesh will conform. It begins with the spirit. There's nothing inside of a Christian that's not gonna begin with the spirit. Mm -hmm. There's nothing inside of you if you believe in God. And this is where we get in trouble. We try to start it with our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. No, he came to save our souls. Anything that needs to be saved cannot be put out in front to leave. Oh my God, my God, that's good. Anything that is in need to be saved cannot be put out in front to leave. So it, everything has to begin in the spirit so that the spirit can convince the soul. So then the soul can then tell and dictate to the flesh was what's going on. See, because sometimes your flesh will tell your soul, I can't do that. Your flesh will tell your soul that's not going to happen. But you got the spirit on the other side crying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You got your you got your spirit on the other side saying God is not a man that he shall lie. You got your you got your spirit on the other side saying and nothing is impossible with God. You got your spirit on the other side declaring the word of God in your life. Amen. Amen. So then that then then that thing that needed to be saved allows itself to come under the power of the Savior. And then it's able to convince that flesh that's telling it what it can't do. The flesh just shuts up and begins to go into automatic and begins doing things that it didn't think it could do. Amen. Amen. See, some of y'all don't realize how many things in life that you didn't think that you would ever be able to do and you did them and now you're sitting down here and wondering what's going to happen next. Wow. Have you ever sit down and thought about, well, I, I, you know, I know I couldn't do that not now. We get to a certain age and all of a sudden we start to counsel ourselves. We start to counsel ourselves out and not realize if I go back over my life and all the things that I said that I would never do and the things that I said I'd never be able to understand and the things that I've never accomplished and the things that I'd never get out of and the things and the habits and all that, and, 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 and God got you through it because God did something in the spirit that worked on your mind, that worked on your will, that worked on your emotion, that your flesh could not even take time to, to denounce it. Your flesh didn't have a time to say no. Your flesh had to begin to walk already in the will of God, not knowing what the will of God was, but the spirit of God was already working under the will of God. So your mind did not have a chance to make a decision. Jesus. Oh, I'm teaching. I'm teaching. The Holy Ghost is teaching this morning. Because see, there needs to be a growth during this season. We come through Christmas every year, giddy and happy and come out depressed because it's over. <laughs> Depressed and broke. Well. <laughs> Depressed and broke. And in my BC years, my before Christ years, I would come out of depression and broke and broke and get ready for the new year by getting tore up <laughs> and hanging out with strangers. <laughs> so that's the way we're gonna start it, how huh? we come from depressed and broke to toe up with strangers. <laughs> And we wonder by February why it's all falling down on us. Because our resolution should have been in the spirit all along. Come on now. Yes. Our resolution, our resolve is found in the spirit. If you, if you listen, he says, I gave everyone a measure of faith. So that measure of faith that he has given you should be the resolve of whatever God has told you. And stop going out trying to get somebody to see what God is saying to you. 
It's so many people that I have known personally in my life that have gotten a death sentence and said, uh-uh, uh-uh. And everybody around them was trying to get them ready for death. And they said, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? But the doctor says, I'm living my life. But the doctor says, I'm living. But the doc, I, I'll leave when God says go. Amen. I'll come when God bids me to come. And see, this is where we lose it because we still depend on someone that, that, that we respect their intelligence on to dictate where our hope should lie. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. See, what we don't realize that hope arrived <laughs> in a way that seems really crazy. It, 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 it arrived really crazy in Romans 4. This is the fight. This is the fight that comes from a, a former sinner. In 4 and 17, he's talking about Abraham. He's talking about Abraham justified before circumcision. Before you go through something in your flesh, God had already justified. Well, well, well. See, even those of us who are under grace, we still try to put the works of our hands in it to say that if I do this, God will do that. Come on, come on. It's too much of that still goes on. We don't even know how we slide into the law because we still feel like that, that if I do this, he'll do that. Well, he justified a sinner from a foreign land that, 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 that sacrificed babies before that there was any work on the flesh. Amen. I said before there was any work on the flesh. Amen. He found him not guilty. Come on, somebody. He found him not guilty and righteous before there was any work on the flesh. And see, there's somebody that I'm talking to, somebody that might hear this later that, that keeps on thinking that you're not there yet because you're waiting on God to finish working on your flesh. And you're waiting to, to, until you can finally get yourself together. And you're waiting until you quit smoking. And you're waiting until you quit drinking. And you're, yeah. you're waiting until you quit doing whatever it is that you do. That thing that calls you away. Come on, somebody. That, that personal lust that you have. You're waiting on God to fix that before you think that God has fixed you. And you don't realize that God has already fixed you. And you're going to mess around and keep walking with God until you walk and that stuff falls off of you. And you're not even going to know it's gone because you're going to have your eyes fixed and focus on God and God is your resolve amen but see you're waiting on your flesh to get right but your flesh is the last thing that's going to get right oh come on now Merry Christmas glory to God it says that this is written talking about Abraham I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him who believed God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they do. Uh, uh, the, the, the original King James calls those things that are not as though they are. Mm -hmm. And he's saying here, he says, who contrary, listen to this, contrary to hope, in hope, believe, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. Contrary to hope, in hope, Contrary to hope, in hope, he believed. Contrary, contrary to believing something that's good is going to happen, you got to still believe something good is going to happen. Why? Because I got a word from God that something good is going to happen. Yes, it goes on to talk about he was about 100 years old and her, her womb was dead. But it, it didn't state that she was 90 years old. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God goes on and tries to tell us now that, that, that anything that's contrary to hope, now that's when you got to fight and come in and say, I believe God even when it don't look right. Amen. I believe God when my body is letting me down. I believe God when I don't have money. Oh, come on, somebody. 
come on, when you're working out at the gym four or five days a week and you're running and, and you've got money in the bank and you've got IRA set up and your investments are going well and you know when to move this and do that and everybody in the family is doing great. Oh, it's good to shout hallelujah. It's good to stand up and declare what God is doing. But when you ain't got no money, glory to God, and you sick and your children sick and your grandchildren sick and things don't look good and your flesh is turning against you and you don't know why and you don't know what's going to happen next and you ain't got nothing to depend on this one you got to go back and say i'm gonna believe what god told me contrary to whatever is going on in this world contrary to what the doctor say contrary to what i feel like in my bed contrary i believe that's why i got hope i believe that's why i got hope because he gave me a word i believe what god said i believe what god said god help us and let me tell you something, that's work, baby. That's work. I mean, if we think about it, hope arrived on what we call Christmas with everything that was contrary to hope. Everything that was contrary to hope. We got a young girl who had never been with a man. God went to work on the flesh. He took the spirit and went to work on the soul and the soul worked on the flesh. He took the spirit that worked on the soul and the soul worked on the flesh. Contrary to all hope, she says, I have never been. Don't worry about that. The spirit is going to take care of that. The spirit is going to give you a seed to give birth to something that you have never had an opportunity to be involved with. I said something that you've never had an opportunity to be involved with. Something you've never had because the spirit is going to put a seed in you and make sure that you give birth to it. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is what this season is about. Fighting through this flesh of ours, fighting through this flesh of ours so that God can make the impossible happen where we don't see it. We don't see it. My God, my God. God went to work on the flesh. He went to work on the flesh of the man because this man was shocked. This man was hurt. This man was disappointed. And it was understandable. And when I read something in a devotional several weeks back, it struck my heart. It says, most natural men would have not only been vindictive because of their hurt, they would have felt to be justified in whatever they did because of the level of hurt. But let me tell you why God had this man. Because this man had already made up his mind that in spite of the situation, I'm not going to make it look bad. In spite of the situation, I'm going to cover up. And in, in, in Matthew 1, it explains it. It says, husband, Joseph, calls him a husband, was a just man, meaning a righteous man. He didn't want to make her a public example. Because as I've stated, she could have been publicly stoned. She was betrothed to another man. So in order for her to be pregnant, she had to have slept in the eyes of men with another man. He didn't want her to go through anything. So he already had a plan. He already had a plan. But let me tell you something. When you got a plan to do good instead of harm, God will expose you to his plan to do even better. Oh, God, somebody's missing that in here. When you got a plan to do good, when you hurt, when your feelings have been hurt, when somebody has hurt you and done something bad to you, somebody has, has disappointed you, somebody has taken your kindness and used it for weakness, God says, if you got a plan to not cause hurt, if you got a plan to pray for them, if you got a plan to show any kind of kindness to them, if you got a plan to not do anything to bring vengeance, God will expose you to his plan for your life. Come on, come on, come on, come on. See, because then the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel Gabriel went to Mary. The Lord appeared to him. Oh! Gabriel went to Mary. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to downsize the size of, of, of what happened with Mary. But see, Mary was getting ready to be, be uh, uh, have a seed that came from God himself. But Gabriel did the talking. The Lord himself came to Joseph. And appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you, marry your wife. For that which she is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. 
and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. So he will save his people from their sin. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take her. Don't be afraid to love her. Don't be afraid because of what you see. Don't be afraid to continue on. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because things didn't work out the way you planned. Don't be afraid. I got another plan that's going to work out better. Don't be afraid. Don't abandon ship. Don't abort the plan. Don't throw it all away because it didn't work out like you wanted. I got another plan. I'm coming to tell you this because you had a heart to do kind instead of evil. I'm telling you this because you had a heart not to harm anybody. I'm telling you this. Come on, somebody. In this season, if you can get your heart together, because some, some people sit up on Christmas were mad because somebody did them wrong, still sitting around talking about people, still sitting around holding a grudge, glory God, and that bitterness is eating them up from the inside out. God says, if you can have a heart to do something good, if it ain't nothing but pray for them, Pray that they'll never do what they did to you to somebody else. Pray that God will deliver their cold heart and turn it into a heart of flesh. Pray that God will do something to encourage them, glory to God. Then God will come to you and say, I got a better plan for you all along. I got a plan for you that's going that's to surpass anything that you'd ever thought about. I got a plan for you that years and years later, people will still be declaring your name as righteous. Amen. 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 Contrary to what was previously hoped for. Contrary to what you previously hoped for in Christ Jesus. Hope is going to paint a new fit picture. Hope is going to paint a new picture. Hope is painting a new picture. Let me put it like that. It's not going to. It's painting a new picture. And so many times it's not the picture that we first uh, paid for. It's not the picture that we wanted the artist to paint. It's not the picture that we had made up in our flesh mind. So when God begins to paint a new picture, sometimes we reject it. And we'll even go as far as to say that it is of the devil. Because we have become so conceited in our minds sometimes that if it doesn't come from my mind, it can't be God. Stay quiet. Go tell your neighbors. Kilgo said it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because that is the conceit of the modern day church. That many times if it doesn't come out the way I saw it, it doesn't come out the way I prayed it, it doesn't come the way that I thought about it, it can't be God. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But listen, let me tell you this. Faith and hope will not be separated. A few weeks ago, I taught about how we need to separate grace and mercy in order to be able to realize the optimum effects of both. But faith and hope will never be separated totally because faith feeds hope and hope follows faith. Faith feeds hope and hope follows faith. See, this is why a lot of people get disappointed in life because they hope for money because their faith is in money because they think that money is the answer to whatever they're dealing with. And so many other people have hope in people because their faith is in people because they think that people are dependable. And I don't care how much people love you, they're not always dependable. See, so what we don't realize is that sometimes these people that we depend on, they got issues too. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let me go ahead on. And some people depend in these days here, they depend on worldly knowledge and technology because they think that that's an opportunity and that's going to fix our problems. But what we don't understand is we put our faith in that. And when it crashes and falls, you go to a McDonald's and they can't even take your order because can't nobody count no more. <laughs> Maybe y'all not been there. Maybe y'all not been there. I've seen it happen in, 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 in stores. I've seen it happen in places like McDonald's. I've seen it happen because technology crashes and their knowledge is only in technology. So when technology crashes, nobody can add and subtract. Jesus, let me move on. Then let me go head on. But see, this is the part that, that God's people today need to hear because so many people put their hope in pastors. And they come away disappointed because pastors are going to let you down. 
pastors are going to let you down. Pastors are not Jesus. Yeah. Pastors, just like those people that you love and you depended on, sometimes they got issues too. Yeah. Oh my God, somebody don't want to hear that right there. And those that don't want to hear that, they, they hold on to that hope in the building. I, if I just get to the church house, I, I get to the church house. Well, what you going to do when the church house lights go out? What you going to do when the church house heat go out? What you going to do when the church house itself is not giving you what you need? And then all of a sudden you get angry, you get upset you, because the thing that you put your hope in it was not dependable. It, it, was not being, it was not able to do what you thought it was able to do. And God sent me here today to let you know that we celebrate Christmas, glory to God, because the gift of hope came in Christ Jesus. And there is no other hope except for the hope that is in Christ. Jesus and you cannot bypass Jesus and go to the Father because you cannot get to the Father except for him and you cannot have the Holy Spirit without Jesus because the Holy Spirit is a gift from Jesus to us amen so any hope that you're trying to have in life any knowledge and expectations for something going on in your life later in life is going to have to come through Christ Jesus can I get somebody to say amen, amen. See, in 11 and 1, sometimes we get it twisted. It, you know, uh, now hope is the thing. Now hope is the substance of things hoped for. But 11 and 1, many Christians think is a definition, but it is not a definition of faith. And we need to know that. Hebrews 11 1 is not a definition of faith. It's a description. Oh, yes, yes. It's a description, but not a definition. Because faith is to be mentally, intellectually, and spiritually inclined and convinced. Oh, yeah. Listen to what I said. Mentally, intellectually, and spiritually inclined and convinced to the point of that's where your trust lies. That's faith. That's a description of faith. So when I looked at 11 and 1 and looked at Jesus and looked at the description, it begins with now. Yesterday, when you were celebrating Christmas, you didn't even re realize that you were celebrating now. I looked at now, and now, the meaning of now, now is a perpetual continuative that always is next. A perpetual continuative, perpetual. It keeps rolling, continuative, keeps moving. Keeps rolling, keeps moving. Keeps rolling, keeps moving. That's always next. That's always next. If I say now, and I say now, the last now is already in the past. Jesus is the only thing that can be our perpetual continuative. Oh, he is the yeah, perpetual yeah. continuative just as he is our propitiator. Come on, yeah. somebody. <laughs> I told you the propitiator is not just the one that stood in for sin. The propitiator is much like that, that thing that from NASA that's coming back that keeps, that keeps the ship and the people inside the ship from burning in when it comes back in the Earth's atmosphere. When it hits Earth atmosphere, it's so hot, glory to God. See, there's some things that are still so hot in this world, some things still so hot in you, glory to God, that Earth's atmosphere will burn you up, glory to God. But Jesus, Jesus, in his perpetual continuative motion is continually to give us grace, continually to show us love that's, un that's, that's unconditional, continually to move in our lives, whether we deserve it or not. And he gives us the gift of hope so that we don't sit there on the edge of the bed crying saying lord i'm so sorry lord. he said get up from there i came to bring you hope i came to bring you a knowledge and an expectation that something great is going to happen to you amen yeah. Yeah. Thank you, god. Ah, god when it talks about that substance he says that's the essence baby that's the essence of the unseen reality that jesus brought with him oh lord have mercy Oh, my God, my God. Anytime during the next week, the next month, the next day, when you start to lose hope, remember this about the story of Jesus. Hope was birthed and made flesh out of inconvenience. Hope was birthed and made flesh out of desperation. Hope was birthed <laughs> as a lesson to every generation because God will keep it together when everything falls apart. My God, my God. If you keep hope alive, come on, somebody. If you keep hope alive, God will deliver when your plans fall apart. If you keep hope alive, God will take you through whatever you need to get through because God always delivers. Amen? Amen? I mean, even when things look contrary to hope, by faith, God will continue to do things that go beyond reason. Amen? 
Oh, my God. God wants somebody to see. Would you look at the birth of Jesus? It didn't look like it was supposed to look. It didn't happen like it was supposed to happen. He had money. that was just nowhere to go. He had money, but there was nowhere to go. God says, there are times I don't want your money. There are times I don't let you use your money. There are times I'm not going to let the natural things come in because I want you to be desperate enough to re respond to the hope that I have already placed in you. See, Mary still knew, Joseph still knew that it had to happen. It had to happen just like I was reading about teaching you about Abraham. It's the word that I got. Oh, Lord, y'all. It's just like Abraham. That's why God put these scriptures together. It's a word that I got. It's not about my situation. It's a word that I got. Hallelujah. It's not about how it looks right now. It's a word that I got. It's not how pretty it is. It's a word that I got. It ain't clean, but it's a word that I got. I'm not accepted, but it's a word that I got. Nobody ain't got time to let me in, but it's a word that I got. God will deliver because he gave me a word, amen? But I've got to keep hope alive and keeping that word alive in my heart because that word is going to be my next now because my next now is for my next move. My next move is what God is waiting, me, waiting for me in. He is waiting for me in my next place. That perpetual continuity. Amen. Uh, so tell your neighbor, God always delivers. See, Jesus secured, secured the breach. And that was another purpose. Just as he has been written in the volume. He came through the volume. To secure the breach. I told you last week, God so loved the world that he gave his son to a people that he wasn't speaking to. Amen. Because there was a breach, a disagreement. Jesus not only came to secure the breach between God and man, but he became the bridge that connected the old and the new with the yeah. eternal. Yeah. Yes. He became the bridge that connected the old with the new with the eternal. With the old with the new with the eternal. The old me, the new me, and the eternal me. And see, when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I took the first step into eternity. Come on, somebody. I took the first step into everlasting. I was able to take that first step to see I'm not stuck in my old self. I'm not stuck in what I used to be. I'm not stuck in whether uh, well, you still might have some of that. Oh, that's all right. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to walk off that just like I walked off everything else. I'm going to walk through that just like I walked through everywhere else. Amen. 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 Because see, in the word of God, he keeps painting pictures in my mind of what it's going to be. He keeps painting pictures in my heart of what it's going to be. He keeps painting pictures for me of what I can be and what I am going to be. Amen. Even when I don't see it myself, I don't need to see it through myself because then I'm looking through my soul instead of looking through my spirit. See, in the old covenant, God organized the people to stand out, to be different <laughs> as they waited for the promise of a Messiah. Yes. But now in us, us, the new covenant people, he's calling us to be organized in the promise. Oh, they were waiting on the promise. He says, now organize yourself in the promise of the Messiah. Organize yourself in the promise of the Messiah. And then he doubled down on love because he says, I'm coming as a baby to die. I'm going to de demonstrate my love because I'm going to come as a baby to die. Oh, God. See, we don't like to hear that. That's not the little fat baby in the bassinet story. <laughs> but that's the story of my salvation. Amen. That's the connection between the old and the new and the eternal. Hallelujah. That's the story that needs to be remembered every Christmas. So that if don't nobody give me a card, I got Jesus. Oh, yeah. Come on, somebody. Glory. Uh, you know, if don't nobody say Merry Christmas, I, I sit home and, and play over and over. Mary, did you know? Did your baby boy <laughs> would come and walk on water? Mary, did you know? Come on, come on now. Come on now. I, I don't need all of the things that I used to need because he is bridging me from the old to the new. 
because I'm not what I was five years ago. I was saved five years ago. I'm not what I was 20 years ago. I was saved 20 years ago. I'm not what I was 25 years ago. I was saved 25 years ago. See, he's bridging the old to the new to the eternal. And the more I walk with him, the closer I get to walk to the eternal promises that he's given me, that he's given me a glimpse of down here on earth. Amen. Somebody say, God will deliver. God will deliver. Oh, my God, my God. My God, my God. But he upped the ante, just like I talked the last two weeks. Last week, I talked about how grace is favor in the old and the new. But in the old, it was connected to kindness. In the new, is the, the, connected to divine influence. And in Jesus, we still connected only to kindness. When are you going to start walking in the divine influence of grace? Oh, my God, my God. Yeah, well, wait a minute yeah. now. I, yeah, that's good. Favor. Fa no, I said divine influence. Divine influence ain't got nothing to do with how much money I ain't got. Hey, I said how much money I ain't got. Divine influence ain't got nothing to do with how bad I feel. Amen. Divine influence don't stop because my mind say stop. Divine influence has me to walk into a situation or to sit at home and pray over a situation. And that situation changes way across time. That's divine influence. That's divine influence given to us. That's divine influence to given to us that was birthed in a cave, y'all. That's divine influence that was given to us and we still want to hold it on to kindness and good things. Ah, oh. oh, there's nothing wrong with kindness and good things. But go on and take the next step toward eternity. Jesus. Jesus. Hebrews 8 tells us that this is a new and better covenant in Jesus. A new and better covenant. Love is unconditional in both covenants. Grace is favor in both covenants. Hope is expectation in both covenants. Oh, but hope takes on a whole new life because in the old covenant, hope is a cord <coughs> to attach and to stay attached to the thing that you long for. See, this is it. We still staying back there and Jesus has come. We're not waiting on Jesus. We're not waiting on the Messiah. Why is it now we cannot have enough faith that we're just holding on to something that we longing for? Jesus came and he flipped everything over. He says, no, 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 no. Now hope is an expectation with confidence and anticipation for something that's going to be pleasurable and good in my life. My God. I said an expectation with confidence. Expectation with confidence. I ain't got nothing but lint, but I'm going to be all right because I got hope. I got hope. See, God says you go ahead of yourself too far. He says, I gave you manna. I, I, I told you just pray for your daily bread. I got you every day. I got you every day. I got you every day. You're trying to store up something and I got you every day. See, that's why you're missing the fun of the day because you're trying to worry about next week. You're planning next week's party on today's time. And now you're getting frustrated today trying to plan next week's party. Now, okay, you go again. Your mind is telling your flesh instead of your spirit telling you, oh, come on, somebody. You, 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 you try to jump and play and jump and play and you come to church on Sunday or you hear a word or you get around religious people and you want to talk about how spiritual you are. And now you come back now and the whole time your mind is telling your flesh your mind is telling your flesh when the spirit of God is just sitting dormant inside of you instead of going on and being impressionable instead of taking the power of God instead of walking in the power of God instead of being able to go and, and, and what was the word that I used earlier uh, a divine influence instead of being a divine influence you're sitting and waiting and you're helpless in time Lamentations. Jeremiah was writing. But hope was gone. And how sad things were. We don't realize when Jeremiah was writing Lamentations, it was a time when Israel was practicing cannibalism. As a people, they were practicing cannibalism. They were selling one another's children. And all who died, they would cook them and eat them. It talked about they had money. It talked about how much silver it cost 
for Dove's Dumb. They had money. It talked about how much they were willing to pay for the head of a donkey. It's not that they didn't have money. They didn't have God. They had money. But that money couldn't buy them nothing but a donkey head and dumb doves dumb. Because they didn't have God. And Jeremiah was lamenting. And he said, my, my strength and my hope in 318 have perished from the Lord. And he said, remember my affliction and my warm, uh, my affliction and roaming. And my soul, my soul still remembers and it stinks within me. You cannot go back to the good old days and think that you're going to replay the good old days because the good old days were never that good, no way. <laughs> when everybody in America is talking about if we can beat this, we can be back to normal. Okay, what's normal? We had gotten so desensitized that children killing children was normal. We had gotten so desensitized, mothers killing their babies was normal. We had gotten so desensitized that, that people go into high schools and, and slaughter children, and that was normal. What, what, what do you call normal? What do you call normal in a desensitized, sinful nation that's turned its back on God? He said, my soul still is remembering stinks within me because I keep trying to reminisce. But then in 21, he has a change of mind. He said, this I recall to my mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Oh, yeah. See, his hope was not in what was. His hope was in the perpetual, continuative God. Oh, he says, I remember that God is faithful. Mm -hmm. I remember that God is faithful. I remember that God will deliver me. I remember that God will remember me. So now, because I have hope, it's through his mercies that we're not consumed. Because of his compassions, his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Every morning. Somebody say every morning. Every morning. Great is your faithfulness, God. The word of God says that he is faithful even though we're not. Because he cannot deny his own. He cannot deny his own. He is faithful. But if you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life, he is faithful because he cannot deny who you are in Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Glory. Lord, have mercy. Oh, you. And you're still trying to connect it how good you were last week. You're still trying to connect it how often you prayed and how much scripture you read. Yes, we need to do that. Yeah. We need to rightly divide the word of God. We need to pray without ceasing. Yeah, these are things that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do. That's just like brushing your teeth and bathing. You're supposed to do it. Okay? But in the Christian world, we think somebody's supposed to pat us on the back when we do it. No, I have hope. I have hope because God is faithful. Somebody say he's faithful. We serve a faithful God, even though we're not faithful. And all of this came about because of Jesus. All of this came about because of Jesus. In Romans 5 and 1, it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. It's not talking about how much money you got. It's not talking about what kind of day you had, what kind of week you had, what kind of doctor's report. We stand and we rejoice in hope. We stand and rejoice. We stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Paul was connected to two prison guards in a dark, dank prison. And they were, the guards were ch uh, changing out every four hours. And he was in chains, feet and hands in chains. But he remembered the faithfulness of God. And he declared, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And we got to wait for things to get right. We got to wait for our situation to turn. We got to wait for things to get better. And God has said, now, I have given you hope. Hope has always made things better. Hope has always brought about change. Hope will bring about a change inside of your mind before your flesh even realize what's going on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, 
<sighs> and if that was not enough, he says, not only that, just like the lamentations were taking place that Jeremiah was wrote, writing about, he says, we will not have lamentations. He says, let me tell you why. I'm going to build this thing. See, because we glory in tribulation. We don't write about it. We glory in tribulations. We don't groan about it. We glory in tribulation. See, see, that's why your tribulations continue on because you keep calling somebody and texting somebody. You keep tribulations alive and in the forefront of your head. You keep uh, tribulations in the forefront of what you're doing, Nick. You keep tribulations out there so far ahead of you that you're afraid to go forward because you know tribulations is up there. Because why? Because you put it out there. Come on, somebody. He says, no, not us, not us. Not us, not of us of divine influence. No, we glory in tribulation knowing that Tribulation produces perseverance. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything I'm going through is producing something. Everything that you suffer through has produced something. Every time that you cried out, it has produced something. You don't realize how strong you are right now. See, you got such a divine influence right now that you can sit home in your chair and just rock back and forward and talk to God and speak about your grandchildren's life. You can sit at home, glory to God, and just declare God's glory over your children's life. You can sit at home because you're using the influence that God has placed on you. And you would not know you had that influence if you had not gone through the tribulations and you know that God brought you through the tribulations. I said tribulations where everything turned upside down. Tribulations where you didn't know what was going to happen next. Tribulations that God brought you through. Glory to God. But now that you can't do nothing but trust God. Amen. And if that wasn't enough, preservation, perseverance gives you godly character. Godly character, not any character, because see, you've been a you've been a Disney character, huh? Come on, somebody. You've been a funny book character, you've been a Marvel character, you've been all kind of characters, amen. But he says, now this produces godly character. Now the character of God is in you. The character of God is in you. You can't listen, listen. You can't speak that tribulation out of your mouth now if you wanted to, because the character of God holds your tongue. Thank you, Lord. I said the character of God holds your tongue. And if that's not enough, the godly character inside of you produces hope. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. King James says, hope makes us not ashamed. Oh, yeah. New King James says, hope never disappoints. Mm -hmm. Hope never disappoints because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that's been given to us. Oh, hope yeah. never disappoints because the love of God has been poured out in your heart. Hope never disappoints because the love of God, oh, uh, listen, and the Holy Spirit that's been poured out in your heart. Man. You might have a Christmas hangover, but you need to get right. You need to get right. Because we will never live in the old again unless we choose to. Jesus came so you don't have to rely on your flesh. Jesus came that you don't have to rely on what you can and can't do on your own anymore. Hope came. Hope came. See, the reason that our hope is undefeated because hope came and defeated death, sin, and the grave. Hope came and defeated death, sin, and the grave. See, I'm, I didn't walk with Peter, James, and John, and Paul, and any of them. No, no, I read their writings. I read their writings so I know that hope has torn down the power that Satan had over me. They had to live it and learn it. I can read it and believe it. Oh. The devil makes it loud on purpose. The devil makes life loud on purpose to distract you away from the hope of glory. Amen. He makes life loud on purpose. And as soon as he makes it loud on purpose, then he makes you feel so alone. God says, you'll never be alone. I've come that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You'll never be alone again. Hope came and laid in a feeding trough to declare, I'm the bread of life. Hope declared, I am the bread of life. Lay me in the feeding trough. 
Jesus says, take, eat, this is my body that I give to you. See, hope came to give hope to those that were told there's nothing to hope for. Hope came out of darkness. Hope came out of lack. Hope came out of desperation. Hope came out of loneliness. Hope is speaking to somebody right now that feels like that they have messed up so bad that they don't measure up. Hope is saying, grab hold to me. Grab hold to Jesus. And when you grab hold to Jesus, I'll come and paint a whole new image in your mind. I'll paint a whole new image in your mind and it will change and it will grow better and it will become more, more, more like what God has in store than what this world has in store for you. And it cannot be erased by the world, but you got to grab hold to Jesus. Hope came for those who were looking for a way out, those who were looking for escape. Hope came to let the world know that God always delivers. So in this season, as I close this out, love, grace, and hope. It's time for us to operate in divine influence because our hope is not in man, our hope is not in money. Hope is not in knowledge, technology. Hope is not in your pastor. Hope is not in a building. Hope is not in your family. Hope is not in your children, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Hope, hope can only be found in Jesus. Hope came in this season so that every season in your life, every season in your life can be filled with hope. Amen. Every season in your life. I thank God for you and the hope that he's placed inside of you. If this word has been a blessing, give God a hand, clap of praise. Amen.